ex-wife comes crawling back after a fair partner cheats on her. Talk about karma. Oh, true story. Don't you just love karma? All these villains in the world think they can just go around treating good people like crap. Then they move on to the next good person and destroy them as well. You know they say, hurt people, hurt people. I should have saw the signs early on when I was dating my ex-wife. When we met, she was homeless. Not living in a shelter homeless, but she had just gotten evicted from her first apartment. She lost her job due to the pandemic. Early 2020. Her landlord wasn't having it. Funny how so many other people were able to stay rent-free in their homes the entire pandemic. Wild. I felt so sorry for those landlords, though. But I met her at a gas station. She was in the process of moving into her aunt's and uncle's home. I didn't know where she was moving at the time. She had just told me she was just moving. We exchanged numbers and talked that next day. That day, during our first conversation, she cried on the phone, telling me how everything was falling apart. She had recently just graduated with a bachelor's and only worked at her first job for six months before the company had to release a number of employees due to the pandemic, and finding work had been difficult. She admitted to coping with these issues with edibles and alcohol. Honestly, after that conversation, I had zero intention on talking to her. I truly didn't, as beautiful as she is. I said she has too much to deal with. She did message me a couple times after that day, and I just never replied. An entire year went by, and she texted me, asking how I've been and wanting to know what made me run away. I called and we talked and I was completely honest with her. I told her I didn't mind alcohol at all or even inedible, but using it to cope when you should be getting yourself together is not a good sign. She agreed and proceeded to tell me how she's been in therapy and she has quit drinking and edibles altogether. I told her congratulations. I was really happy for her. She told me how she landed her job and things were great and she wished that she would have met me at a different time, like now. I said, look, there's nothing bad between us. I didn't hate you or anything. I just felt like you were going through a lot and I, and I know that wasn't a good time to try to get to know someone as I am looking for something serious. He said, she said, so am I and I think I'm ready now if you're up for it. I'd love to take you out for coffee. I was flattered by that. So she literally offered to pay right then and there. I was okay with that. We did end up going out for coffee, and she paid, no hesitation. It was almost in a way like she was apologizing for something, but I didn't think she should have apologized. You know, she was where she was in life, and it just wasn't a good time, but look, we met up in the future. So I thought it was good. That turned into us dating every single week and then hanging out. And eventually we became intimate. We made it exclusive. It was beautiful. I can't lie. Nothing wrong. She truly was not a drinker anymore. And I didn't see any signs of edibles. So around her, I just try not to drink. Maybe once or twice here and there. I had a small drink somewhere, but she would not indulge. She truly did not. She truly did stop drinking. She was happy, had her career going, and things worked out. Eventually, we got engaged. That lasted for seven days before we got married. Yes, as soon as we got engaged, we went and got married. Got the marriage certificate and everything. We rushed pretty fast. It felt right at the time. We actually had a hiccup right before the proposal. So I used to deal with a woman before getting back with my now ex-wife. Back when she called and told me she doesn't have bad coping mechanisms anymore. After I started dating my now ex-wife, I cut off the girl I was dealing with because it really was only bedroom action and I truly wanted more. The girl I was dealing with didn't want a relationship, but our bedroom chemistry was amazing, no lie. I told her I wanted more and I was interested in going to see what else was out there. And if she's not willing to move forward with our relationship to something more serious, 
then we should probably end things. She told me, good luck, and I never texted her. But one day, when my now ex-wife was on my phone, that same woman texted me two shower videos saying how much she misses me and I need to come over to make her feel better. Of course, my now ex-wife was extremely ticked off, aggravated thinking I was sleeping with someone else behind her back. She even called the girl, and even though she said we, did, we hadn't seen each other in a long time, my now ex-wife just didn't believe it and thought we both were lying. There was a lot of arguing, and it ended up with my now ex-wife crying, saying that she trusted me, etc. I told her I loved her, and she said if I truly meant that, then I'd make her my wife. So that's what I did. I did love her. I did see myself being with her forever, so I married her. So we were married and things were fine. No issues at all until about 2020 going into 2023. My ex-wife didn't want to spend New Year's Eve with me. We had plans to head downtown and watch fireworks from a rooftop bar. Great view looking towards the river. Last minute, a few days before, she just needed to go with her co-workers. I eventually said, okay, we'll go with your co-workers to whatever party they wanted to go to. She then says, no, it's just me. It's not a couple's thing. Hun, just hang out with your friends or something. I said, wait, what? Your husband isn't allowed? This sounds very suspect. At the end of the conversation, she wasn't budging on going without me. I couldn't believe it and didn't know what had gotten into her. Of course, the days leading up to New Year's Eve, I went snooping. And the day she was to go with her co-workers, I found out that she met someone on Tinder. Her and this guy had been talking for a month, and she was to be with him that night. So I found out she was to meet up with her co-workers and then meet up with him so technically she wasn't lying about seeing the co-workers but she definitely omitted seeing another guy and she'd been cheating guys this is how a woman's mind works in her head she told me the truth so no wrongdoing anyway i confronted and told her we're done you have been cheating and you lied about what you will be doing she proceeded to tell me that she never lied because she indeed is meeting her co-workers and hanging out. Mm -hmm. See, there it is. She completely ignored the fact that I knew she was cheating. I said, I know about your tender affair and how you both are meeting up to bring in the new year. She had no words and continued to get ready. I told her whether she decides to go or not, we're done. Her last words before she left were, well, I may as well just go then. Give me the papers to sign. That New Year's Eve was the worst. I felt horrible, but around 11, I snapped out of it and decided I didn't want to go into the New Year sad. I poured a drink and played some games. It cheered me up, and it actually helped. She didn't come back for three days. I had no idea where she stayed, but I know she was off work that week. She eventually was served. The way I found out she was served was when she sent me a long message via text. Well, just multiple messages. Back to back. Message one. You're such a coward. I didn't come home because I wanted to give you time to cool off. I hung out with a friend for an hour before heading back to my co-workers. Your butt hurt for no reason. But that's okay. I will sign on the dotted line. New year, new me. But I didn't respond. Message two. Let's talk about how you cheated on me before we married. I gave you my heart and the whole time you were screwing another woman behind my back? How do you think that made me feel? I didn't respond. And then came message three. Listen, I didn't cheat and you cheated before we married, so I'm sure we can get over this. When you're ready, just call me and let's get through this. Message four. Why are you reading my messages but aren't responding? I called and it went to voicemail. You're weird for just watching me text you and call you. Message 5. Okay, well, we're done then. I don't have time for this. Like I said, you are a coward. F you. Eventually we divorced. I didn't lose anything or neither did she. 
She sent her cousins to get her things and they tried to take my furniture. She claimed it was hers when it wasn't. So I bought the furniture that she really, really wanted. And she said that since it was a gift to her, then it's hers. I said, no, I bought it for our place. And it's going to stay here. She gave up because she didn't want me to fight one of her cousins. He and I got into a heated argument while she was on the phone. He had the nerve to get in my face in my own place of residence. I was so ready to knock him out. He's always been annoying to me. Anyway, the other cousin was trying to break it up and wasn't wanting any type of friction between us. And my ex-wife on the phone just said, let it go. It's not worth it. She wasn't getting that furniture. I bought that furniture. I didn't buy that for her specifically. So a lot of time goes by and she reaches out to me. She is telling me everything about the guy she moved on with. And yeah, she moved on with the guy that she met on Tinder. She's telling me how she caught him cheating. Well, let me tell you exactly what happened. Before she even called me, and I know guys, I should not have picked up her call, but I did. So on Instagram, she messages me. Hey, I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. She's video calling me and I'm not answering. But she's messaging me. I can't believe this. I'm so hurt right now. I ruined it. I ruined us. Why didn't I stay with you? I figured maybe she has had been I figured maybe she had been drinking, and I did respond in the message and I said, Calm down, what is wrong with you? She said, Please, can I call you, please? I told her yes. She calls me, she just goes straight to it and says, I found my boyfriend texting another woman in the shower. I snatched his phone while he was in the shower, and he was texting another woman. He has been cheating on me. It hurt so bad and Clearly, she was drunk. I guess she went back to drinking, and I'm just sitting there saying, Oh, well, that's not my issue. That's what I told her. Sorry you had to go through that, but I'm going to get off the phone now. She said, Please, one thing. I have to say this. I need you to know that I'm still in love with you, and I forgive you for whatever you did before we were married. Can we please work out our relationship? We don't have to marry again, but I just need you. I ended the call right there. I didn't want to hear that. And that's when I blocked her on everything. Definitely too late because I should have blocked her a long time ago. But I did. I have zero sympathy for her and I've moved on with my life. The nerve of her to come crawling back crying about being cheated on. What's wrong with people? Well, I guess it's like I said, hurt people, hurt people. She was damaged when I met her. And I should have left her where she was.